Hello, everybody. Um, so welcome to Textile Skills uh, Center Tea and Chat with Nicola Perrin, who um, has uh, done this before with us, but not this particular workshop. I'm uh, very excited about this one. This is Drawing for Textiles. And this is a sort of a prelim to her um, series that she's doing starting in April. Can't remember the date. That's all. What's the date, Nicola? 19th. I've got a presentation just in case. Yeah, it's when when's it's a Wednesday night. She's doing five weeks um, and it's a series and they build it builds up each week. Um, so um, just to let you know that this is being recorded and if you want to catch up, I'm going to hopefully put the recording up onto the YouTube channel tonight. So if you want to catch up with this or any other of our past um, tea and chats, they're all up on our YouTube channel, Textile Skills Centre YouTube channel. Um, uh, what else have I got to say? Lots, there's lots of things going on at the moment. We've um, we've just had a fantastic face-to-face -face workshop. And as I'm talking, by the way, I'm letting people in. So that, just in case you think I'm babbling on. Anyway, there's been lots of, uh, we've had a, a fantastic workshop in Guildford last week. Um, some of you might've come to that. It was brilliant. Really, it was, there's about 25 uh, teachers turned up. It was brilliant. We had a really good day. Fantastic venue. So hope, hopefully going back to that. Um, We've got um, the Eco Textiles uh, workshop in Leicester on the 22nd of April, still spaces for that. Um, and that's with uh, Fiona, um, Bold Fiona Bolding. And that's, that's really exciting because we've not done this one before. Um, we've also got um, in Sandbatch, I think, is that next, Nikki? You're on mute, but we've got Sandbatch, which where we're doing the- 29th. 29th of- April, April, which is the surface textiles course and the essential manufacturing course, which we're doing. Um, so we've got lots of things going on. We've got loads more um, courses coming up um, after, after Easter. Um, so with no more ado, I'm going to hand over to Nicola, who's going to hopefully do a workshop. I hope you've all got your bits and pieces and you're going to join in. Um, so anyway, Nicola, welcome. Thank you very much. That's great. So uh, I'm going to jump straight into it because I know um, we're under strict. I'm under strict instructions to finish by eight. So um, so I believe everybody has a life to go back to after this. So uh, so let's get on with it. So first, I'm going to just share my screen. Do, do, do. So. Assuming everybody can see that. Yes, that's fantastic. Okay, so uh, thank you for joining us uh, this evening. So my session um, today is um, kind of kicking off um, kind of a, like a preamble, as, um, as Dawn said, to the Drawing for Textile series. And this particular session is what I'm calling confined drawing. So it's about drawing in different kinds of spaces. Um, let me go through this. So I'm going to keep the presentation as nippy as possible. So if you don't know, um, I'm Nicola Perrin. I'm a freelance designer, maker and tutor. And I've been teaching um, in universities in particular, I've been teaching textiles for just shy of 25 years now. So I've got quite a lot of experience there. Um, but I'm now freelance and I run um, Perrin Studios and on Instagram, I'm at Perrin Studios. And just a quick kind of like preamble, as Dawn said, we've got this um, drawing for textiles series starts on Wednesday the 19th of April um, and it's going to be running from 7 to 8 30 p.m and I think it's quite a fun and informal session while we're still going to learn um, plenty of, um, of things but the idea about how we kind of can play with drawing um, through both actual through textiles and paper-based um, approaches to textiles. And that's something I've been teaching for 20 odd years is how we draw for textiles. So moving on to this session. So, um, so 
I thought I'd actually start with what's needed for this session. So if you just haven't quite got things together in time, then you can um, do that. It's quite straightforward. And then the other thing about um, I, um, my sessions is I do find that sometimes people prefer to watch and listen to my my session, make notes and then do it later. And um, because they're recorded, it's quite nice to be able to kind of go back over. So we're working with um, black and white photocopies. If you've got some A4 or A3 paper, scissors, glue stick if you haven't even got a glue stick then you could just work with tape actually which can be quite nice can quite add some quite different effects and then really general drawing materials nothing particularly fancy so biros pencils I, while you can choose to do however you want to I'm actually going to be doing this workshop in black and white today and I do have a reason for that and then if you've got a pin or a needle or something um, sharp then that's quite a nice um, little addition to the tool so if you're wondering about photocopies, these are the kind of photocopies that I'm going to be working with today. So I've got some kind of like archive designs. I've got things photocopied onto tracing paper. I've got um, price lists from Whaley's fabrics and all sorts of things going on um, in my selection today. Um, so the approach um, that um, I have for this session, I've taught this session quite a few times to both um, students and tutors. Um, and it's a really nice one to do when we're going to be starting um, to develop an idea into textiles in particular. Um, I really like this for things like quilt making workshops, tapestry workshops, um, and also kind of like blot, block pattern making sessions. I think it's quite nice because you can stage it progressively. So it's it's a kind of a workshop that um, is sequential and you kind of go through different stages. I think you can introduce a challenge approach, which is what I'm going to be doing um, this evening. Um, so, but what I mean by that is I just throw out snappy little challenges to add in or take out from your drawings. Um, so I'm, um, when I draw quite, um, uh, what's the word, quite naturally, when I'm just in my kind of like natural environment, I draw really big. I love really big, expressive types of drawing. Um, and I find that usually students kind of split into two kind of like shops there. So they're either matching me and really enjoy drawing big. Um, and so this approach is a real challenge to them in the same way as um, my students who really like to work small have to really push themselves. So often I find with warm up exercises, they tend to push one kind of student and not so much another. So this is, I, I find this quite a nice warm up exercise actually. It, so it switches you out from your comfort zones. Um, it's quite nice to kind of just calm nerves if you've got students who are feeling or you're feeling a bit nervous about drawing. And also, if I find this is really good if I'm kind of a bit of a funk over something and I just can't quite work out where to go with my drawing. This is quite a nice controlled one to do. Um, I personally have removed colour from this. Um, I'm really colourful in the way that I work normally um, and I, I tend to find that a lot of um, my students when colour is involved they become kind of quite focused on the colour and they forget about things like composition and texture um, and different qualities of marks so as soon as you go down to black and white you can't necessarily um, kind of like avoid those kind of conversations okay and it also thinks about because we're working small scale it makes you rethink composition in quite interesting ways okay I think it's a really nice way to kind of promote alternative solutions for textiles so it can be going towards surface um, approaches so print or embroidery but equally um, what I find is there's a lot of um, drawing for textiles out there which is aimed at printmaking and to a certain extent embroidery but not for weave or knit which is actually the biggest part of the textile industry is coming through knitted and um, woven products so thinking about how we can teach drawing for weavers and knitters for example is great um, and then also in terms of kind of like developing ideas this is quite a nice way of doing it and you can either do that by zooming in which happens quite often that's quite an usual thing um, 
But actually in this session, I'm kind of more thinking about how we confine our drawings and make them really, really small and then blow those up and you get very different effects. So this drawing, for example, on um, my left, um, feels um, like um, it's got some really nice inky qualities to it, eye cat qualities, um, printmaking, but also possibly some kind of like cut work involved as well. Okay, so just going to go through some development, other development approaches you might want to have to a workshop like this. So this is what I kind of call the stepping down process, and it's not in black and white, obviously at this moment, okay, so this is some other work that I've done for this. Um, so this is by work starting with a large drawing and I'm working in inches here. So I've started with a 16 inch drawing and they're all timed as well. So I allow myself kind of like about 15 minutes down to two minutes for each drawing. And I just bring it the kind of like the key ideas that I'm seeing in the drawings down. So it's not trying to kind of like reduce it like you can on a photocopier, but it's taking from each step. So when I start with a larger drawing, I've got one idea when I go down to the size, which is eight inches. I'm just taking some of the kind of the core concepts that I was thinking about when I was doing that drawing and just bringing it down and down and down until I get to one inch um, drawings and marks. And then again, that idea of kind of like them being able to kind of like blow it up. I think that would make a really, really um, lovely idea for uh, for a tapestry, for example, particularly when you've got all those different kind of like uh, gradients of colour happening in there. So that's something that can work really, really well um, with uh, weaving. And then this would make I I. I mean, I'm quite quilt obsessed, but this would make an amazing, really large quilt. Um, just that idea of, um, of just some solid blocks of colour. Um, thinking about um, printmaking and layering up. And then also, again, so these are these really small drawings that I did that are just being blown up now and how you can start to kind of see um, some of the qualities that were coming through in the marks that were being made and smudges that were appearing. So the other example I want to show you is a, is a little idea um, where you kind of like expand out on a, in a sketchbook format where you just um, cut into it. You actually produce it or I produce these in reverse, um, but it's quite nice to look at them in the order that they were um, designed to be. So I often quite like doing this particularly <coughs> excuse me with a drawing I don't particularly like or I don't think has worked particularly well and try to start to look at it in different ways and just starting to see I quite like how it emerges going um kind of like um back to kind of like the smallest um, amounts of information and then jumping up until we get to the full drawing which in personally I felt wasn't a particular success but when I look at it in other areas particularly I think kind of around there that's quite interesting particularly with that really small dash of turquoise that's happening in that top right hand corner I think that's quite interesting okay so what are we going to do today so I've broken this down into um we're going to kind of focus up until the fourth um element um and the first element I always think is super super important with drawing is just to prepare your space and just have things around you um, I'm going to work through this class really quickly um so if you can have things to hand that's brilliant then we get then going to work at kind of like making marks in small spaces then we're going to do some timed drawings and then space reduction and then I'm going to throw in um, um some challenges um to make you kind of question the choices you're making it's quite interesting doing this online because I can't usually I throw my challenges out depending on what I'm seeing happening or not happening so I'm going to be doing this one without knowing what it is you're actually doing okay and just for future reference these are some of the kind of challenges I may throw out there I may throw out some things that aren't even on there okay and then in terms of thinking about kind of like mark making exercise that we're going to do these are some of the things that we might play around with okay so uh so let's get on with it so I'm going to switch cameras I'm going to stop sharing mm -mm -mm. stop share okay so Dawn is going to now switch to my iPhone and I'm going to turn around and I'm going to make that a big screen. There we go. Fabulous. Thank you, Dawn. 
just tell me if you can't hear me because I've got my microphone switched off on my phone so it doesn't start to get dodgy feedback happening okay it's fine you're fine we can hear you you can hear me marvelous okay so I think that we are just uh -oh. No audio. Okay, so is that focus? Can you see what I can see? Okay, so uh, what I have, I have a whole range of things here. I have um, a cutting mat, um, which is quite nice in um, for this kind of workshop. Might use this, might not. Probably going to be mainly focusing on using my scissors. Um, I've just got some just normal run of the mill materials, nothing fancy here. Um, glue stick. Put all these slats and everything to the side. Um, I have um, my um, sketchbook with um, just different papers in, or rather, I have my different papers here. Okay, so this was um, um, something went really badly wrong in the photocopier years and years ago. You can see how the edges have been fading. I've got about 100 sheets of these which I've used in so many different projects, and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, got some tracing paper and just some normal paper. I'm just going to work on um, today. I've got my photocopies, um, a range of different things. Yeah, there you go. I even stick them in my photocopy. Um, so you can see different ideas happening in there. What can be really nice when you're doing this as well is having different zoom levels. Um, happening. So I was photocopying um, fabric samples. Um, for example, that was a bit of cordage, um, um, blowing up text really big so that you've got all of the kind of like the markings there, text at normal size. So I mean, even there, that's really interesting, just having that change of scale happening there. So I've just got moving things in the photocopy. So you can just have a lot of fun with that element printing. Like I said, on different kinds of papers. Okay, so I've got a range of those. Let's see what we do with that slot in a minute. But first of all, I want us to do a little warm up exercise. I don't know if you're all with me at this point. So we're going to make a range of different kind of like quick papers um, with different marks, um, different media um, on them from kind of like letters and dots, to dashes, loops. I'm obsessed with doing this loop pattern. If anybody's seen me before, they might recognize that in my work quite a bit. Um, so lots of different papers there. So one of the things I could think can be really, really um, um when I'm doing um at my classes with the students, I'll say, right, let's just draw out four quick boxes. We're just going to fill these four boxes and immediately, I, and I love this. All the different personalities come out so you'll have students who will bring out rulers um, and start measuring and then by the time we've kind of halfway through the process they've just finally finished drawing things um, out so i'm just quickly um, drawing out squares i'll often actually have um cut out and i haven't got them with me now cut out little templates that i give students so that we can do this a bit quicker so you if you're wanting to get things moving really fast so I've just drawn out four very quick squares and I'm going to use um, a pen just to start to draw some different kinds of um, line work to start off with. So I'm going to let you just do um, a square and do it however you want it to be to start off with. And I'm going to throw out some little challenges for the next ones. So just filling it with my tonally at the moment it's pretty much similar all the way up so what you might start to do is just build up part of that a little bit more so I've got some different um, amounts of light and shade happening there and because we've just gone straight to black and white this could be just blue and white it doesn't matter but if it's just you working with one color um, it's really nice because you're not spending five minutes worrying about which colour you're going to use first. Um, so we can start to see we've got it building up quite nicely in different ways there. 
Okay. So the next one I'm going to suggest we do, I don't even know if this one running out. No, that's not running out. What I'm going to suggest you do for the next one is do it with smudges. So pick a media, okay, that um, you can smudge onto the page. It's quite nice to draw straight onto your finger and just put little marks onto the page. Gives us some different kind of qualities that we can work with um, later on. Particularly, I'm I'm really line obsessed <laughs> with my marks. So so bringing in something that is smudged or smeared um, or pressed or anything like that can give us what well, give me quite different qualities that are going on here. I haven't got any water um, to hand, but you could just smear some water on something particularly if it's going to um, run. Okay, so we've got, don't know if you're keeping up with me, we're going to be working on these just about a minute on each one. Um, what am I going to do next? Let's use this. Um, so I am just going to do a series of lines. I think this is also really nice to use. So often we kind of throw out um, mediums when they're running out, particularly things like felt tips. Um, it can be really nice to um, work with um, say felt tips that are um, running out, running low on ink, um, working with pencils before you resharpen them, as well as working with them as freshly sharpened pencils. I always remember when I was um, a student at university, one of our um, tutors, but if anybody's from Huddersfield around here it might know, Tim Moskovich, I always, always remember him saying to us, you should always use a sharp pencil. If you're using a blunt pencil, what are you doing? And I always remember that. And I was thinking, I don't think I agree. I thought that was completely wrong. <laughs> so, uh, so I like to use pencils when they're sharp, when they're blunt. I like to work with pencils on their side. Um, a whole range of different ways that you can use them. So we've done smudges. You've done something of your own choice the third one um, of your own choice. Let's do one now where we are holding our left and right hand with tool at the same time and just fill um, the space uh, with marks. So we've got both um, tools happening at the same time. In my case, super uncontrolled. Maybe not things, but that's what we've got. That's what I'm going to live with. <laughs> um, so that's quite a nice way to start off um, this class and working into this session is just by immediately working in small spaces. If you've got students in a class or you yourself or somebody who actually quite naturally works to this scale already, then push yourself to go a bit smaller so that you are having to kind of like rethink how you work. Um, I would normally work pretty large. So for me to start to work in spaces this big or this big, um, I find kind of quite limiting or not. I don't know. Actually, that's a lie. I don't find it limiting at all. What I find is I make different kinds of marks. And that's what's really exciting about a workshop like this um, is the idea is that it does force you. Just like if you're somebody who works small and suddenly you're going to go to a really large scale, say an AO drawing, your thick line that happens at, the, at a postcard size, suddenly you need to think about how you move when you're making that line, what kind of materials you use, and what's the brush, what's the tool that you're going to use to make that um, mark, or does that mark stay at the same scale as it was on the postcard, for example, so does everything become enlarged or shrunk down? Or do we just think about how we make these marks differently? Okay. I don't know if people are still with me. Okay. That was our first stage. What I'm just going to do is I'm just going to cut some of these out. So I've just got um, these all good to cut into.
I've also got some really lovely scissors that somebody bought me. Um, I absolutely love the scissors, so that's quite nice to play with. Um, so working on different kinds of papers um, can be really nice. So it could be working on bits of card from the back of a cereal box, it could be working on the inside of envelopes. Um, so I think what's quite nice about this is that it can be working with scraps um, of paper. Um, you could be working on colored papers, um, but different weights, um, things that um, can tear easily, things that won't tear easily. So you've got to come up with a really clean cut line and um, can be really nice. Actually. So I'm going to move on to the drawing. Start some of our composing. I'm actually going to put on tracing paper. Why ever not? Okay. So before I do that, what I want to show you is now we have a bit of a warm up and started to make some marks. We're going to play with creating some um, some collages and some images using both our. That's where all the paper went to using both our photocopies, okay, as well as our um, drawn um, papers we've got here. Okay. Um, and so what you can see here is, so working, um, we're going to start working on a scale that's, this is probably about three inches, so I'm talking inches quite a lot, um, but I jump between inches and centimetres. So that's, so that's about eight, um, nine centimetres-ish square. I really don't think it matters that it's particularly accurate at the moment, um, or at all, if you don't want it to be. Um, you can um, draw that out very perfectly if you want to. You can draw around a template. You can just draw around something quickly. You might even have some pieces of paper already cut out, um, and you might want to work onto those as loose individual pieces. Okay. So what we are going to do now, let me just pick around my tongue. Can we bring in the camera? Yes. Yeah, we are done one time. So what I'm going to suggest we do is we start out working larger. Okay. So for me this is small, but actually in the scale of what we're going to be doing today, we're going to start by working on two three inch drawings. Okay, so let's, so we can either, as I said previously, is my pencil gone? Yeah. <laughs> so we can either and draw that out quite relatively accurately. Um, can you, this is my amazing, if you're wondering what it is I'm using here, if you're not a quilter, this is a quilting um, um, ruler, um, which is just absolutely amazing um, in terms of being able to quickly draw things out. Or, as I said previously, you can just draw that quite lovely. It's quite nice to have um, an edge to work towards, particularly if you're somebody who doesn't work so small. Um, so having those edges there really does start to kind of like pressure you into thinking about what it is you're going to put and use in that space because we've only got so much space okay particularly if we've been making marks and not so much thinking about working in a really confined space we might have photocopied something and blown it up quite large for example um and it's like, it's like how do you use that when you've only got that much space so what we're going to start off by doing is just putting a mark directly on the paper in our space so we're suddenly not working with just a white space. So I'm going to let's just put some lines in there. You can work on one at a time. I quite often will work on multiple things um, at a time. Um, maybe that's cheating. I don't know. Is it cheating? Answers on a postcard. So now I've uh, obliterated that kind of like white space and I've now got something to work to. I can now start to look through my um, photocopies. 
when I do this in a class, I tend to, what's quite a nice thing to do is actually to um, pin or tape all of these up, all of my photos, all of your photocopies up on, um, on the wall. And then actually, um, and then I suggest to the students that they go up with a pair of scissors and just go up and have a look. It's like a massive menu board and go up and just cut out um, the little bits that you're wanting. So rather than having big sheets of paper, I go up and I'll be like, oh, so that bit just in there is quite an interesting section. So I'm going to have that bit. And then another, and that, because that stays up on the board, another student will see another bit. So people are walking away with areas and elements that they find quite interesting. Um, so that's quite a nice thing to do. Quite a nice way to prepare a class as well. So, can you see how there? So this is this is really interesting. So when I was um, just putting that, I was seeing, which is my natural way, and I, I believe most people's natural way of seeing things. You'll look at the image that has been created or the text that's been created. I just cut through to that to get to this piece, but actually, as I've just seen, I don't know if you can pick that up, just caught the edge, and that's created a really nice um, little um, line, almost, um, if you can see that there, like a little running stitch. Mm, that's lovely. I'm going to use that. Okay. This is what I really like about this, is you start to kind of like notice things, as I said, in slightly different ways. So I know because that's been placed in paper, I can think about layering that up. Um, it might become an edge. I don't know. All I know is I want to use it at the moment. Ooh, yes, I think that's its spot. That's quite interesting. The other thing about using photocopies, again, it's this negative space idea, that edge where it didn't photocopy right to the edge. Very interesting. So I'm just thinking about how that works. I might put into that to create. And automatically, I think of that as a bit of a frame, but actually, I think that would possibly be more interesting. That's coming into the center of the space. And where I have those um, edges, I've now got different angles in there. So hopefully you're starting to kind of look through some of your photocopies. These might just be pages from magazines or from a newspaper. And um, this is quite a nice page here. I think I'm going to bring this in. And looking, that's quite a nice edge, which almost reflects the scale of that there. Now I'm also being mindful of time. Because we're only going to have a couple of minutes on this before we bring our scale down a bit more. So, as you can see, I've just ripped that paper there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that successive and rip. Okay, I'm going to play with that. Oh, I think I like that up there. Maybe with that going on top to cut into it. So you can see I'm just playing around with some things. So this piece that I originally cut that I wanted, I'm not even sure if I want this anymore. So what I'm going to challenge you all to do now is if you haven't already, you might be way ahead of me, is think about, so if we look at on here at the moment, the different weights of lines that we've got. So we've got something that's quite thick here. We've got something relatively fine, okay? These lines are all coming out. They're of quite a similar weight. So I think I want to bring something in here now, which has got a different quality and weight of lines. So the drawing that we did earlier on, um, that might be quite nice, but it's got kind of, that's got a bit of the brushy effect that we've got going on there as well. I think this is what I want to bring up. And I also think, and again, let me just cut into this to see where we can move. Might even be the bit I'm cutting away. 
Okay, so I've got some of this fantastic balloon glue, which means you can see where you put the glue. Um, I'm not going to worry about sticking these down um, perfectly because this is just a quick kind of like collage idea. And then in about 25 more seconds, 20 more seconds, let's get it back. We're going to reduce these two ideas down. I'm going to keep that one as it is. Okay. I would absolutely, with my students, be saying, you need to do this as quickly as I'm saying, so I'm going to do it myself. To understand the pressures they're all under. <laughs> I keep going on about being quick. It's always interesting, isn't it? Is that kind of balance between doing things quickly and having that creative flow, and then the students right now, now we need to slow right down and let's build up some really lovely qualities going on in here, which is why I consider this to be an ideas generating um, workshop. Okay, I've got a couple of pieces there. I'm actually quite liking this one here. I quite like the simplicity of this one. So what I'm going to do now is on another piece of paper, let's go for what I want. Piece of paper. Actually, they're sticky labels. Excuse me. Let's go with me the old face plate. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this idea here. And what I would like and suggest everybody do now is you're now going to do up to four one and a half inch drawings. So I'm going to I definitely want to do one down here in the blue at the moment. Okay, so again, I'm just quickly drawing these out. I'm not even that bothered if they're funny or nothing. I think I've just got that in here. So what I'm going to propose is that you, for your first one, you start out by taking some um, paper and then rather than sticking it down flat, what I want you to do is to um, pleat it. Um, so we can start to get some different surface qualities um, happening on our page. Okay, so I'm just going to put a quick piece of glue down on that bottom edge and that top edge. Because often I find that work can become kind of quite flattened and there's, there's not much about textiles which is particularly flat. It's, it's something that moves around the body, it's moving, but even if it's upholstery, it tends to even be moving around a sofa or along the lines of a curtain. So there's always that idea of movement um, going on here. Okay. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some more. I'm going to make something really interesting. I've got some um, blown up text here. I can make this do a quick no. We're immediately see that looked quite small, relatively small, didn't it? But as soon as you go for some square, and this is what I mean by it, you just have to start to think about the composition in a very different way when you're bringing things down. So I now have to start to think about. What's actually the most important element in this piece here? Is it is it this this edge with this text here? Am I thinking that? Oh yes, I 
feel like it's it's somewhere I think it's this and it may even be at an angle moment. Right. So I'm just going to um, cut this so we can get this triangle coming in. Okay. And I'm going to leave a bit of space at that edge. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm playing around and I'm picking up on different scales um, marks here. And I've got this space here, which is quite interesting. I might even have a journey that I don't even know what that what the text letter in was. And then I add it in. Let's just pretend, I don't know, what's that an S? So I'm bringing in some marks. Ooh, you could pretend you're in that in the paper. Okay. So we're just starting to work into these. And we might even have one of our drawings we've got here that I quite like in the background um, that we've got going on here, the deeper shades. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of like transfer those marks onto here. Okay, and again, think about how much space they take up. Actually, I think I might go in bolder. I was thinking about using the edges of my pen. Take some bigger um, marks in there as well. Right, I don't know if you can see that all clearly. So it's starting to build up some different ideas. And I've completely ignored what's going on here. So let's go on back on to what's happening here. So I've got this um, lovely shape here. So I'm going to take something, okay, this one here, and I'm going to reflect on that shape. And what I could spend ages tracing that off and being really accurate, um, but that's not the name of the game here. Okay. Um, I know in the back of my mind, but sometimes I think it's best not to overthink these things. And also, I'm thinking at some point I'm going to blow this up really big. So this becomes a much bigger image. Mm, that's, that's funky. Um, so I can, I'm kind of thinking about that, but try not to pre plan too much because the point of this is when you come to do that. Yeah blowing up of the image and photocopying of the image, it, um, it's a surprise. And I've got a jaunty angle there, let's call it. Just stop it down at slightly the wrong angle. That's lovely. I actually might leave that one as it is. I'll tell you what I would do if I had some paint on me. I think that would deserve a nice blob of paint um, just there, but I don't. So I think I might do instead is I've got something already here. Oh, this is some ink um, files I've done. I've been making my own inks. You can all use this. So I'll go with that to try it. You know, I think I'm really liking the shape that's here. I'm just going to cut this out. I don't know if anything I'm saying here is making any sense to anybody. Um, and I'm just reflecting back shapes. Ooh, look at the negative. 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 And um, Mary there is going to go into. Ooh. It's going to come down here. With a dead straight line in it. There we go. So I'm just making choices, thinking about look at that really lovely. Let me see this here. Look this really lovely negative space. It's just something made here. So if we're thinking about making, I don't know, a block printing and um, some wooden blocks, that would be really, really lovely. If we're thinking about um making into um, um a PK'd um, elements, some really nice um, shapes starting to emerge there. Um, whereas if we think about um, constructed blocks, we've got ideas of um, 
things that move forward and roll forward. Sorry, what I missed one. I think we need to move on. I think we are on to our timeout. Um, I'm just going to go to the next. Friends. Okay. Is it going to say the room best? Which in my book is ridiculous. But hey. So when I've just stopped that one down, that one's just gone outside the edge. See this one point. The edge of the drawing, I don't know if you can see on the screen, is just there. This is the created a new edge there, which was really lovely. Actually, I quite like that. Being so so um one of the main things I teach is weaving. And edges come up all the time in terms of how we're weaving and how we're thinking about the impact that the edges actually have. So that's quite nice. One of the challenges that I throw out there is to just think about what's happening on the edge and don't even do anything on the inside of the space that we've been drawing out. Okay. So if you're all still with me, we are going to go on to our final one. So I think we need to go back to um, another sheet of paper. Just a bit floating by step for this one. So I've got so I'm going to keep um my ideas around me. Okay. Yes, that's tracing paper. Let's get rid of all the noise on the other side. So I can see my ideas. I can see. Are starting to um, reduce down or become pretty minimal actually with a couple of these, which is not my normal thing either. More maximal than minimal. Okay. Which is helpful as that's what it's all about these days, apparently. So, what I'm going to do is make some more squares. This time, I'm just going to make them slightly than an inch. What's that about? couple of centimetres, one and a half centimetres. Actually, I'm going to immediately make one of my squares um, darker in a dark ground. Because one of the things that I do find when we're working with um, photocopies um, um, from images, we're always looking at the positive rather than the negative spaces of the left. So actually, this will promote us and push us to look at the um, negative spaces instead. Let's do a couple of dark brown ones. Okay, let's make that one super fold in. Okay, leave that one like that, and then do this one. So we're now working in a very, very small space here. So I need to think very carefully about what quality lines do I want to place, this is all the space I've got to work with. If I'm going to put one thing in that space, to be the right job, isn't it? So what's that going to be? I've got a boomerang, of course, Nicola. You're going to go to that. Oh, I always do loads of these. I think it's my um, avoidance of doing knitting. Makes me want to do all these loops. I do them as loop diagrams, not the actual knitting. Now, the question is do I want this scale mark or do I want where my gut instinct is going? Oh, oh. We've got knitting, we've got wee world here happening together. I like cutting to this actually. Um, so what it, this is really, really making me do is think about the minute choices that I'm making rather than the big choices, which can be really nice. Um, but often 
become much more focused on those elements. And I can get the music going that way. Do I cut down there? Maybe I'm going to cut down there. So I'm just going backwards and forwards through my spaces. So normally, particularly with textiles, we're often thinking about things in the larger scale. So we're thinking about them going into um, fashion or we're thinking about them going into products. In textiles, we don't often, so often, I don't think, I think embroidery probably more does, um, get to really think about the smaller detail. So if you're doing hand stitch, for example, I would say when I put my hand stitch head on, which is usually pretty regular. When we would do this with a scalpel, I've got the new lovely slippers, haven't I? Oh, yes, look at that. That little white speck that's coming through there. Let's just check. There we go. Oh, yes, love it. Okay, so then if you can see that, I have a feeling it's not 100% focused down there. So you can see there, that maybe we've got there. So let me just glue this on before I lose my way. It's a tiny swivel. So you can see we're just, we're not getting, while I'm being kind of quite precious in thinking about which bits I do and I don't want to use. And of course, I can take much longer on this if I want to. I think what can be um, really nice about this is when you do set timers, in my classes, I'll often have like an egg timer as well. So it will be going off every um, two minutes. If I say it's a two minute task, um, particularly if you've got a lot of um, people who procrastinate in class, I'm just going to put that into a sort of diamond shape. Um, it stops that from happening too much. And really, really interestingly, you find that a lot of the students that initially, when they come into my drawing classes, find that frustrating that I'm kind of like timing everything and making them work that fast at times. Um, they'll often get into me in final year and go, oh, Nicola, I'm been rerunning some of your speedy drawing classes um, because at the moment, particularly in final year, at this point in the year, there's a lot of thinking, um, there's a lot of long-term weaving going on or print making and you're working on the same things over and over again. And so just having different speed points can be really nice. Now, how do I get this all in there? I'm going to squinch it up. That's what I'm going to do. Ooh, that's a bit. I'm just going to I need a voting system going on here on the right round of that flag. I'm going to make a keep it simple, Helen. Keep it simple. Okay. And basically, this is just the idea. It's a pretty simple idea. Um, I um, So there are some techniques, textile techniques, which require you to have... Um, right, so let me step back a bit. So with quite a lot of textile um, processes, and the processes themselves add a lot of kind of like visual data. So when something is woven or knitted, for example, even if it's just all in a solid color, the texture of the yarns, the, um, the texture of the structure of the loops of yarns, the way the light and the dark shadows are cast um, on the piece can make a piece look super, super complex, even though it's just a solid color. And often I find that when people are developing ideas for textiles, particularly non-print based, so from hand stitch through to weaving, tapestry, rug tufting, 
um, and to knitwear, the ideas on paper are really quite complex. Um, and there's quite a lot going on. And then when you add that noise of the texture of all the tufts of yarn um, on a carpet or of all of the um, French knots or whatever it is you're doing in the embroidery, that all adds additional information. So sometimes what you need to do, I find, is create something actually quite simple. And a lot of these are really simple. And then you can just blow them up. And you've got then you've got a kind of a, a template or in say tapestry that would be called a cartoon to then work towards. You can then obviously bring in different colours and tones and qualities and layers um, and the subtlety of changes. Which when this is blown up, what I think what I suspect you would see on this one, for example, is actually the black pen is starting to break up on those edges, which you can't see when you look at the distance. But when that's blown up, say, like to an A2 size, for example, you would pick up on all of those real subtleties. And so that can then um, feed into your cells. How is the time? We have about two minutes to go. So I'm going to turn back around. And hopefully people have managed to catch, keep up with me. I think I've earned the dinner tonight, right? Let's come back here. Well, I never did. Dawn, can you still hear me? I'm back. Is everybody all right? Everybody's still with us. Yay. <laughs> we didn't lose anyone on the way. Somebody, Emily, I, I'm assuming she's an ex-student of yours from a long time ago, says, I remember you doing something like this with us on the textile crafts course when I started oh, in 2004. Yeah. I still have the drawings. Oh, <laughs> Emily, that's amazing. Yay. <laughs> oh, blimey. That's nice. Has anybody got Thank any questions you. or any comments or any um thoughts about what they've done or the feelings or anything has anybody got anything they want to say or ask Nicola everybody's gone quiet I hope they haven't all just fallen asleep <laughs> my voice has this kind of like skill for doing that <laughs> <laughs> does anybody want to show if they've joined in want to show their little bits of uh, artwork come on brave up Oh, I don't yes. mind showing. I've got weird hit things on there. Thick Campbell. <laughs> oh, wow, look at those. Oh, brilliant. I'm really liking the compositions and the space. That's really brave use of space and leaving space. That's really nice. I'm going nice to uh, remove spotlight on you and anybody who holds their work up, I'm going to just write. I'm just going to quickly go on a few of these. Oh, look at that. Yes. Fantastic. That's that wiggly line there. Yes. They're well, lovely it's... when they go really small as well. Oh, I like that. that I'm working on to pay on to pass. Oh, nice. look, I love that. I like that. That's fabulous. Good. Good. Is that working on a magazine? A photograph. Oh, yeah, that's, that's great. Idea. That. I like your smudges well, of pink and yellow there as well. Look at all of these. Emily. Oh, yes. Hi, Emily. I recognise you. <laughs> Hiding behind her face. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, they're really cool. Right, who else is holding stuff up? There's another one here. Hold on a minute. This is Debbie. Oh, nice. Oh, I like, oh, I like yeah, that loopy, loopy. Oh, and look at that. Lovely. Oh, yes. She, that's really, really nice. It's rolled. And then is that a tape or an acetate over the top to give a shine? Bit of sellotape, like sellotape. Yeah, it's it's sellotape. My glue is somewhere in my daughter's um craft box downstairs. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I think sell sellotape's a really nice one to introduce to bring that sheen in as well. So you've got that matte and that shiny as well. You've got really anybody nice. else wanting to show their uh, works of art? I can see one there. It's looking really lovely. Oh here. Like iPad. iPads, Bruce. Yes. They look beautiful. They look like photographs. Ruth, Ruth. Oh, they're lovely. Oh, yay. Look at that. Hello. Really, really nice. That's really lovely. Thank you so much. Oh, good. Ooh. I'm glad yeah. you feel really inspired. Yeah, they're lovely. lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you for coming. Uh, Ma Amanda 
Bonnie is saying, I love this. I'm going to do this with my students in the morning. <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. So, yes, thank you so much, um, Nicola. That was I really, really enjoyed that. I had a little play. I'm not showing you what I did, but I had a little play. <laughs> I didn't have all the bits. I just got like a borrower and a few bits. It was just like, oh, yeah, I could do that. That's what I really love about this session. You don't have to have lots of fancy equipment. It just... You can just um, join in with whatever you've got around you. Yeah, so. yeah. That's good. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. And thank you, um, Nicola, for doing yet another great workshop. And hopefully mm -hmm. some of you will join her on her series, which starts in April. Um, mm -hmm. uh, having done that and watched that, I, I think that that is a great introduction to what is going to happen uh, on this series. So... Great stuff, really inspiring and really creative and very freeing. Um, you know, yes. the vision's yeah, gone just like way. doodle. Brilliant. Dawn, can you repeat what day it starts, please? Someone's asking. Um, can you remind Nine, me? Wednesday, the 19th of April, seven o'clock in the evening. Yeah, and, and it's you can go on the website. Each, yeah. each one is an hour and a half. It's on the yeah. website um, and it's on Academy, so yeah. It's on the website so it's it's uh what's what we called it um drawing for textiles drawing for textiles so yes yeah, so some of it's paper based the first couple of paper based and then the third um the last three are drawing with textiles themselves but so I think um, we some, normally. if if what we, what we plan to do this is the first time we've done this sort of series so somebody's asking about is it available as a recording what we're planning on doing is recording each session and putting it up um, so that it's it can then be revisited. Um, as Nicola said earlier, this session is quite often people will go back to the recording and then have another go themselves if they haven't done it tonight. Um, and so what we're planning on doing with this um, series is recording each session and each session will have a, um, it, it'd be like follow like, like a course um, and each session We'll have the what you need, the requirements for the for what's gonna what you're gonna be doing, um, the equipment that you need, and the recording. Um, obviously, the recording will be after the event. So, um, yeah, but yes, not, it, it we're not going to record available. the actual class. The class will be live, and then I'll record it afterwards and include the kind of questions and the points that were raised in the recording. Yeah, yeah. So post recording instead. Okay, mm -hmm. so. Hopefully um, everybody enjoyed that. I hope you all did enjoy that. And we'll see you again soon. The next Tea and Chat is with um, Rachel AD and she's doing um, tips on how to get a, um, a, a, a mini video or, or sort of promo video for your course or your school or whatever and how to do it. She's done it herself really simply. So um, I think that is on the 25th of April. Can you confirm that, Nikki? I think it's 25th of April. Um, and that is the next tea and chat. So that's after Easter. Uh, so hopefully we'll see you then. Okay, thank you so much. I'm gonna stop the recording.